Father God, as we come before your presence this morning, on this first Sunday of Advent, oh God, we just come with open hearts, just thanking you, Father God, for another opportunity to be in your presence. God, we thank you for life. We thank you for health. We thank you for strength. Oh, God, we think that our last night lying down was not our cooling bed. Oh, God, that we were able to get up this morning in our right mind. Oh, God, and focusing on you, Lord, and we found our way to this place called the Mount of Olives. God, we thank you for traveling mercies. We thank you, Lord, that you gave us a reasonable portion of peace as we slept last night. You watched over us and you protected us. And so, God, we have so much to praise you for this morning because you are worthy of all praises and honor and glory. And we thank you this morning. Oh, God, we just come, Lord, and ask that you have your way in these services this morning. Oh, God, as we come to lift up, lay awareness day, Oh, God, we just pray that you would just touch the hearts and minds of every individual, Lord. Let them know that we all have a calling. We all have a part to play in the kingdom, upbuilding of your kingdom. And so, God, we just ask now, we invoke your presence this morning in the worship services, Lord. Oh, God, we just pray that you would just come in and have your way, Lord. Oh, God, we just pray that you just fill us with the anointing, Lord. Oh, God, you would touch the hearts and minds of each and every individual, Lord. We pray, Lord, that you would touch the hearts of the individual who's to bring us the word this morning, oh, God. Oh, God, speak to him, this Lord. Oh, God, let him have his way, Lord. Oh, God, let him descend that you may ascend, Lord. Oh, God, bless him this morning. And, God, we just thank you, Lord, for the shepherd of this flock this morning. We lift up Pastor Crutcher before you, God. We thank you, God, that you have sent him in this direction. God, sometimes we don't always understand why we are where we are. Oh, God, but you say your ways are not your, our ways, and our, our, your thoughts are not our thoughts. And so, God, we're trusting in you, Father God, and we thank you, Lord, for for what our eyes have seen and what our ears have heard. Oh, God, we thank you, Lord, for the prophetic words that have come forth. We thank you, Lord, for how you have used him in a mighty way. And, God, we just pray that you should continuously to heal him and strengthen him, Father God, from his surgery, Lord. And others, Lord, who have been struggling, going through different situations and difficulties, Lord. Oh, God, we just lift up those who are in ICU and CCU, Lord. We pray for those who are home bed written at home, God. Oh, God, there's so much sickness going on. Oh, God, but you are that bum from Gillian, Lord. We know, Lord, that you are the healer. And so we're trusting in you this morning, oh, God, just to heal us, Lord, and use us, Lord. And, God, we just pray for the entire first family this morning, Reverend One Need and Jonathan and Anna. We pray for the associate ministers. We pray for the stewards and trustees, officers, members. Oh, God, we even pray for the doorkeepers this morning. Oh, God, for you said in your word, I'd rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than to dwell in the tents of weaknesses. So, God, we just thank you this morning for the doorkeeper. We thank you for the musicians. Oh, God, we just thank you this morning, Lord. We're just so blessed and so pleased to be here in your presence. Oh, God, that we can lift up your name once again. Now, Father God, we just pray, Lord, for our nation. Oh God, a nation who has turned their backs against you, Lord. God, we're living in dark days. We're living in days of calamity. But God, I just thank you, Lord. You've already warned us that these days will happen. These things are going to occur before you're coming again. So God, we thank you, Lord, for giving us spiritual insight to see what is happening. Now, Lord, use your people, Lord. Use us as ambassadors. Oh, God, so we can go out and tell a dying word, world that Jesus saves. And so, God, we just pray that you just be, continue to be with us, that you continue to use us, Lord, and just to have your way, Father God. And, God, we pray now that you just hear our prayer, Lord, and grant us peace, peace that passes all understanding. Oh, God, and we'll give you all praises, honor, and glory, Father God. And, God, we just thank you, Lord, 
that we lift up the name of Jesus. We lift up he who is able to keep us from falling. And his name is Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. We thank you, we praise you, we adore you. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Scripture reading is going to come, Sister Dana, Kara Kennedy, all Kara, Kara Kennedy, amen. Good morning, Mount Olive. Our scripture reading will come from the First Corinthians, chapter twelve, verses one through eleven. God words read. Not about spiritual gifts, brothers, I do not want you to be ignorant. You know that when you were pagans, somehow or other, you were influenced and led astray to mute idols. Therefore, I tell you that no one who is speaking by the Spirit of God says, Jesus be cursed, and no one can say, Jesus is Lord, except by the Holy Spirit. There are different kinds of gifts, but the same Spirit. There are different kinds of service, but the same Lord. There are different kinds of working, but the same God works all of them and all men. Now to each one, the manifestation of the Spirit is given for the common good. To one there is given through the Spirit, the message of wisdom, to another, the message of knowledge by means of the same Spirit, to another, faith by the same Spirit, to another, gifts of healing by that one Spirit, to another, miraculous powers, to another, prophecy, to another, distinguishing between spirits, to another, speaking in different kinds of tongues, and to still the interpretation of tongues. All these are works of one and the same spirit. And he gives them to each one just as he, as he determines. The word of God for the people of God, glory be to God. At this time we are preparing ourselves for the worship through giving. We're asking those who are ushers to come forth and we have the Brother Fuller, the electronic devices over here for those who would like to give electron electronically. Uh, at this time, we have Pastor Crutch to come forth and lead us up in the worship through giving. Praise the Lord. Let the church say amen. Come on, give God a hand of praise. How many ate too much over the holidays? All right. How many folk had? Yeah, yeah. Amen. How many folk had a good Thanksgiving? And since y'all don't want to say y'all late too much, that's all right. Well, amen. Now I'm going to 
be honest, that, that turkey and the sweet potato pie was so good and cake and, and collard greens and peppers and okra in them. And I just kept eating. I don't have to remind you how good God has been to you. So as you come at this time of giving, I want you to feel thankful that you're able to give back to the God who's given to you. Amen. And I don't want to try to press you on how much you're going to give this morning. I want to press you on the spirit in which you give this morning. Because you've made up your mind what you intend to give God this morning and you know your responsibilities. But I want you to give it in a spirit of thanksgiving and be thankful to the Lord that he has provided and allowed you and given you a heart that would give unto God. So I want you right now to lift your hands up and just put your hands together and just give God a praise for what you're about to do. Come on, tell him thank you. 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 Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Now, if you would hold your gifts up before the Lord, and now together, God, this is my gift. It is a seed, and I plant it in this ministry. I'm expecting a harvest in this ministry and in my life. I'm expecting it to be exceedingly, abundantly above all that I ask, all that I think, and all that I imagine. Lord, I thank you that I'm able to give in Jesus' name. Put your hand together and bless the Lord.
come of thee? we prepare our hearts to be fed this morning. Sister Sharon Miles is going to come forth and introduce the speaker. But before she comes forth, um, Pastor, I just believe in dealing with things as they occur. And those who are sick and shut in and who are not feeling well, can we just 30 seconds just pray for them Let's lift up Sister Grant, and she's not feeling well, and she's, as you know, she was the worship leader this morning, but uh, we're going to just continuously pray for her and lift her up uh, at this moment. I, I don't believe in waiting later on. Uh, now is the, is the acceptable time. Amen. Let's bow our heads. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we just lift up Sister Grant and others, Lord, who are not feeling their best this morning, but yet they press forward to come to your place of worship, Lord. Oh, God, we thank you for leading them and guiding them to the healing fountain. Oh, God, we pray now that you would touch, Lord, and heal every element, every situation, condition that they may be confronted with, Lord. You know her. You know all of us, Lord. We all have come with some types of ailments, Lord. But we just thank you, God, that you, that you, that we didn't stay home and stay in our bed that we decided to come out, oh God, and just be healed from your healing words. So thank you, Lord. We praise you. We thank you. We bless you this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. Sister Miles, please. In the year of our Lord, some 45, 44 miles east of Orlando, Mr. Herbert Fred Pennington and Mr. Julie N. Collins had a baby boy. He was one of four children and grew up in Daytona Beach, Florida. He received his Bachelor of Science degree in Business Administration from the University of Florida in 1979. While at the University of Florida, he met and later married Cheryl Blake, and to this union, Cheryl and Brian Pennington were born. In 1980, him and his family moved to Orlando, Florida and joined the Mount Olive family under the then leadership of the now deceased Reverend Y.B. Bruce. Since coming to Mount Olive, he has served in numerous capacities under different leaders, Christian education director, trustee, in charge of the Vacation Bible School. He started and headed up our annual church picnic. He has been a faithful choir member and a member of the pastor's aid board. Currently, he is an instructor at Mid-Tech Institute and Kaiser University. He is also attending Ashbury Seminary, working on completing his degree in theology. Recently, he accepted his true calling, the ministry, preaching the anointed word of God. It is with great pleasure that I present to some and we acquaint to others and exclaim that our speaker of the hour is Minister Fred Pennington. Sister Robertson in the house this morning? She's not here. But it gives me an opportunity to go back and do some old school singing. Y'all okay with that? I'm going to I'm crank it up and y'all just jump right on in with it, okay? Lord, I thank you, thank you, thank you. Lord, I thank you, thank you. Lord, I thank you for the days of my life. Lord, I thank you. 
Lord, I thank you. Lord, I thank you for the days of my life. Oh, Lord, I thank you. Lord, I thank you. Lord, I thank you for the days of my life. Lord, I thank you. Lord, I thank you. Lord, I thank you for the days of my life. When I was sick, Lord, you healed me. When I was sick, Lord, you healed me. When I was sick, Lord, you healed me. And I thank you for the days of my life, Lord, Lord, I thank you, Lord, I thank you. Lord, I thank you for the days of my life. Lord, I thank you. Lord, I thank you. Lord, I thank you for the days of my life. Oh, when I was down, Lord, you raised me. When I was down, Lord, you raised me. Lord, you raise me, and I thank you for the days of my life. Lord, I thank you. Lord, I thank you. Oh, Lord, I thank you for the days of my life. Lord, I thank you. Lord, I thank you. Lord, I thank you for the day of my life. Lord, I thank you. Lord, I thank you. Lord, I thank you for the days of my life. Lord, I thank you. Lord, I thank you. Lord, I thank you for the days of Let the church say amen. amen. Lord, I thank you, thank you, thank you for all the days of my life. Please pray with me. Most Heavenly Father, here I am standing in the gap in between you and the people who are waiting to hear from you. I ask that you bless me, you use me, you demote me, and to increase thee. As I go forth and give a word, help me, Father. These and other blessings I ask in your Son, Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And amen. Good morning, officers, members, friends, and surprise guests. Before I start this sermon, it's always something going on with me. Um, but I anguished all week about what the title should be. I started out with, Christians don't be ashamed of the gospel. Uh, Christians, we need to stand up and not be shamed. And I finally ended up with no shame in my game. I ended up with no shame in my game. I'd like for you to journey with me to the book of Romans, the first chapter. And the key verses are 15 through 17, but there's a little bit of other things going on there. Paul was writing the church. He was looking for true believers and those who were righteous. He'd gone places and hadn't received 
uh, warm welcome, let's just say. You know how people are when you go somewhere new and they don't know you. They let you in and they say all the pleasantries, but you don't get the feeling. Yeah, it was one of those kinds of things. Um, reading from the New International Version. And I'm going to start at verse 8 just to give you a preliminary thing of what was happening. First, I thank my God through Jesus Christ for all of you because your faith is being reported all over the world. God, whom I serve with my whole heart in preaching, the gospel of his son is my witness how constantly I remember you in my prayers at all times. And I pray that now at last by God's will, the way may be open for me to come to you. I long to see you so that I may impart to you some spiritual gift to make you strong. That is, that you and I may be mutually encouraged by each other's faith. We gain knowledge and grow in faith from each other. That's what they're saying there. Um, I got lost just a minute ago. I don't want you to be unaware, brothers, that I plan many times to come to you, but have been prevented from doing so until now in order that I might have a harvest among you just as I have had among the other Gentiles. I am obligated both to the Greeks and non-Greeks, both to the wise and the foolish. That is why I am so eager to preach the gospel also to you who are at Rome. I am not ashamed of the gospel because it is the power of God for the salvation of everyone who believes, first for the Jew, then for the Gentile. No shame in my game. Paul wasn't ashamed to go out there in this church and talk about his experiences when he was switched from Saul to Paul, that road to Damascus journey. Now, a lot of us come to church every day, and we have that same journey. We have that same journey. At the time of this writing, most of the world lived in what is known as a shame-based society. You know, where family was honor, and uh, Anything you did against the family, you could have been banned or thrown out or outcast. You did nothing to bring shame to the family. At the time of this writing, Paul decided to book. He was going to talk to everybody in his journeys Thus far, in his experiences with God, he realized somewhere along the way that whether Jew or Gentile, there are still true believers. And when he went and approached the church in Rome, he was seeking out the believers. Ah, uh, today's society is in trouble, Christians. Today's society is in trouble, Christians. And that's because I dread to say it, but the Christians appear to be ashamed of the gospel. The Christians appear to be ashamed of the gospel. See, in your Thanksgiving festivities, other than prayers to God, how many of you had a discussion about God? Oh, 
I saw two hands in the corner. What I'm going to tell you, I'm like y'all. At the place I went for Thanksgiving, it was plenty of food, fun, and frolicking. Had a good time. Ate good. And the only time God was mentioned is when we stood around and talked about what we were individually thankful for. I had some discussions with some of my partners. You know, we talked about the Gators and the Seminoles and who was going to win out of Ohio State. And these church folks, but God didn't enter the discussion. No talk about God. Christians are ashamed to talk about who they are. That's the way it appears. I'm not ashamed. I'm not ashamed. I'm willing to tell it wherever I go. You see, shame can do something to you. There's that good shame. And then there's that shame that we just keep going into to make webs and we keep spinning and spinning and going deeper and deeper the wrong way. You know what I'm talking about. Them things you do that ain't nobody supposed to know nothing about but you. And then you keep doing them. Shame. The society, I look around this church and every Christian in here, everybody in here is a Christian, and I'm being open-minded when I say that because you all believe in Christ. But how many people know you believe in Christ once you walk out that door? Can they tell it in the way you walk? Do you flip off the street, the strip, and go from church to street in a heartbeat? See, I, I'm a living testimony that that happens because I used to do that. I used to do that. And I used it as a defense mechanism to hide who I truly was. See, I didn't want it to be known that I didn't always believe what my partners believed. Or that I agreed to everything that was going on. But like most good Christians, I was meek, mild, and humble ashamed to speak up, went along with status quo. Now those of y'all that know me that over the years that have grown with me the last 30 some odd years know that that's drastically changed. Now I just tell you what I think and we move on. And you can agree, disagree, and we, we'll be all right. And then something happened to me on the inside. And I don't always say what I think anymore. I bite my tongue. Something slip out every now and then. But I find myself being shamed by my own act. Things I do, things I have control over. It's been a many a day. I wanted to say some things to some of these people in this church, and I walked out the house. Oh! I thank God for Jeanette Tyson and, 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 and Reverend Sanchez and even Reverend Gass. said, Fred, don't you say that. Don't do that, Fred. And Maxine had it so bad she could see it on my face. She'd come and get me. And just, come on, Fred, let's go. That's 
that's real. That's why I can talk about being shamed. And see, as Christians, we got to get out of that mode. I ran from here and ran to there and did this, everything because I was ashamed of whose I was. Not who I was, who I was. And there is a difference. Because, see, I've accepted the fact that I don't belong to me. I am a vessel for he. I, I don't belong to me. Get that now. I'm a vessel for he. My job on this earth is to remember the things that I've done that shamed me. More importantly, I need to be cognizant of them things I did that shamed God. See, I ain't not stupid. I'm not that important in the scheme of things. I know that my time on this earth is limited. And I've spent a whole lot of time doing things that shamed. Well, now I'm working on a path. I'm working on a path. I'm trying to clean up my act. I know it starts on the inside, and I know I can't do it by myself. I recognize that I was born into a world where sin is on every corner. Demons and imps and witches Everywhere you turn, everywhere you turn, they may be even living with you and you act like you don't know. As a Christian, you were given an innate spirit. It helps you discern. A lot of us ignore it. Act like we don't see it. Act like we don't know what it's telling us I'm not ashamed ain't no shame in my game now all of you that have been on this spiritual journey know that it's a long tedious ongoing process don't you dare think that I stand before you pressing to be pressing or presenting myself to be there and we're right where God wants me because that's the biggest lie I ever think you. That's not the case. If you look at my chest and check out my forehead, they say work in progress. Need more work. Come on, Jesus. Shake me up. That's what you see on me. I don't have a problem admitting it. I'm no longer ashamed to tell you I know whose I am. And I don't care who knows. It ain't nothing I got to hide. Now, realizing that everybody is not where I am, realizing that everybody don't feel like I feel, they want to continue to do what they want to do because they like the way it make them feel. Or how it make them look to somebody else. But I need you to understand something now. Outside appearances change. If you ain't look lately, look in the mirror. You don't look like you did 10 years ago. You better ask somebody. <laughs> You better, outside appearances change. You ain't know. I used to be skinny, now I can't even get in them clothes I used to own. I got so many clothes in my car that I can't wear. What's up with that? Oh, I don't wear that style no more. Outside, the real change comes on the inside. 
And it starts when you declare to yourself, I'm not ashamed. I'm no, there's no shame in my game. Now, I wrote down some things because I was instructed that you have to have three things to tell the people to inspire them. <laughs> now, I'm going to throw out three things. And I want you, I'm throwing these out only because I can only speak on what worked for me. I'd like to believe it's good advice for anybody, but since it's not biblical, I don't necessarily want you to say Fred told me. It ain't in the box. But I'm going to make it plain for you. In order to have no shame, the first thing you need to do is stop yielding to your own desires. What I want. I want it to be like this. This my program. This my board. This my kitchen, this, my meal, this, this. I, I, you know who that's for? That ain't glorifying God. It's all about I. And when I say stop yelling, don't you dare think you're the first person that's been to, they tempted Jesus. The devil tempted Jesus. Everybody get... Do you remember David? He saw that woman. He was so tempted he had to have her. Oh, God. Did you imagine the, the life he lived after he did that? Yield not. Stop yielding. Yield not. Stop yielding. I don't know which one sounds better. <laughs> but don't go to your own desire. That's the first thing. The second thing is share your story. See, nobody in this room knows exactly who God is or what God did for anybody else. But if you sit down and you don't share your story, you are doing your part in not spreading the gospel. You are showing that you're ashamed. You have to be able to tell your story. See, because it's insignificant as it had been, i.e., the day that boss told you you was fired, and the person that came around the corner and said, there's a job for you over there. Or uh, when the lady at church made you cry, and then the pastor came along and said, good job, well done. Or when you come out here and work your heart out and your fingers to the bone. And these people around here hurt your feelings. You need to talk about how God lifted up your spirit and sent you back the next day for more work again. See, that's what needs to be told. There's not enough of that going around. People don't know that there's a real God that's working on everybody. You need to talk about it. You have to stop yielding to your own desires. And then you got to be willing to tell your story. I think about that. Think about my story. I ain't always been who I am now. And I ain't always just busted those of the church wide open either. I done been to many a club. Many of this kind of place and them kind of places where you do them things that you know you're ashamed for everybody to know. That's why I can talk and I can stand here because, see, I can go to them places now. When I want to walk in the door, I want to talk about Jesus. They want to run me away. 
That's real. That's real. See, I can still go to them places, but I'm not going as who I used to be. I told you two things. What was the first one? You remember? Uh huh. And what? And what else? Okay, good. That means y'all. That means y'all with me. I ain't out here by myself. There's one more thing. And I think it's the most important of all. And I'm getting filled with the Spirit right now. So if I deviate, it's only because the Lord is leading me. But check this. The last thing is you've got to stand on the promises of God. You've got to stand. You've got to stand. See, when you're sitting around with your friends and you know that what they plan, you got to tell them, hey, that ain't cool, man. You got to start stepping up. See, we need more of that in this society. I don't know whether y'all watched out with some of the activities in the last few funerals that came to the church. And one of the things that was readily apparent was that I, we were dealing with a bunch of unchurched folks smoking blunts in the park and lot, opening up the Hennessy, coming in the church creating havoc. They didn't know anything about God. They don't know. Nobody's trying them talking about God. Do you know I was at the gas station and I met a man. I told him I was going to church. He didn't even know what I was talking about. And that's real. What church? What y'all do there? This is 2015. What black person don't know nothing about a church? Pardon my French. What, pardon my, what black person don't know nothing about a church? You got to stand on the promises of God. You got to stand up for God. You got to state your claim. You got to state your claim. You got to let everybody know about that God. You know Jesus Christ's Father, the one that died for your sins and mine. So we have a chance to get back to Eden. Don't you want to get back to Eden? I speak to a whole lot of people, and everybody talking about, I want to get to heaven. Well, what you doing to get there? Because the Bible says that if my people, those who are called by what? Would humble themselves. And what? And seek my face. Turn from what? And I will, he, then he told them what he would do. Then. Only then. We got to get this thing together down here. Preachers come, preachers go, they bring this word, they bring that word, and it's just like it just goes. We got to get it together here. We're trying to save a man. We're trying to save God's creation. You haven't forgotten who God is, have you? You know the one that spoke and it was good. The one that formed us out of his image. We got to stand on the front. You got to pray. You got to pray. You got to get him on the inside of you. It's all right for the lip service. But you got to stand. That's a charge. Used to sing a song in the church, a charge to keep our hands. Unfortunately, that's been misconstrued. Let me get it right. 
Let me help y'all get it right so y'all don't be in the line. The congregation or the laity seems to think that charge was only given to the minister. I, I, I'm just saying that charge is for every Christian sitting here. Every one of you, all of you that believe in Christ, you got a charge to keep. You got a God to glorify. There's no reason for it to be any shame in your game. And if you know the God I'm talking about, you won't have no shame. You will be glad to tell what he did. You will be glad to witness. You will tell everybody. Oh, something just happened. Before I sit down, I got to tell you, I just got to, you know, you get them things. I don't know what you call them. Rev ain't told me yet because they're coming. The hit, the hit. I got a new title for my sermon. I think I started out with, what, no shame in my game? Check this. No more shame. No more shame in my game. Thank you. Now, you're clapping, and I hope to realize something that happened. If you preach a sermon, you may start out with one title. But by the time you get to the end of that sermon, it should have done something to you that you got a whole new message. Yeah, yeah. And what I just heard the brother say that, 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 that I heard what God said to me. And what God said to me made me go to another level. And the shame I used to have, even when I started the sermon, I ain't got that no more. My, come on now, that, that's, it's shouting time. Oh, glory. Yeah. 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 And it tells me he wasn't just preaching from his lips out, but from the inside and then bringing it back out. And by the time you hear a sermon, it ought to make a difference in you. And shame, you walked in the door. You ought not to walk out there with. Because all of us need to know by now that all of us got some work that God's still working on. That all of us is a work in progress. Ah, uh, on my forehead and on my chest. Put it on my back, too. I even got it wrote under my feet in case the devil tried to slip up from underneath me. Woo, God. No more shame. No more shame. No more shame. No more shame. Oh, God. I want to ask the question, can God hear you? Nah, I know y'all were going to get quiet. Let me tell you where I'm coming from. I heard the preacher say that God says, my people who are called by my name, if they would humble themselves, pray, seek my faith, and turn from their wicked ways. And I heard him say, then and only then will I hear from heaven. So I ask you, can God hear you? Only then will I hear from heaven. Can God hear you? 
And so that's something that I want you and the Holy Spirit to check and see if you've gone through those steps that you'll humble yourself, that you begin to pray, that you're seeking God's face. And just in case you don't know what that is, that means you accept his judgment. You gave up your judgment and you stopped saying, oh, I, I wouldn't have done it if they hadn't have done this to me. If my husband hadn't act like that, I wouldn't have. If my wife had a did this, then I wouldn't have. If them church folk would have, and you just begin to accept God's judgment. And then have your turn from your wicked ways. And just in case you say you ain't wicked and ain't got no wicked ways, <laughs> the Bible said all have sinned and come short of the glory. My, my, my God. And just in case there's somebody in here this morning, I want all of us to go home and allow the Holy Spirit to search us. I don't want you to answer that question by yourself. I want you to get with the Holy Spirit. And between the two, not only the Holy Spirit, but take the word in there with you. Because I want you to, when, when you look at yourself and you find something in you that you, you got question about, I want you to go to the Word and see what the Word say about it. And between you, the Holy Spirit, and the Word of God, find out whether you have gotten to the point where God can hear you from heaven. There may be somebody that needs to accept Christ as your Savior. I want you to know all. You can do so right now. Or there may be somebody that need a church home where you can grow and learn to be bold in your testimony for the Lord. I want you to know the doors of the church are open. God is standing ready, saying, come just as you are. If I was you, I'd come right now while we sing. If you are here, you ought to come and respond to the word of God. waiting come the power of God is with you just come Stop yielding to the ones we have and not yield to the ones that's going to come at us. Amen. Praise the Lord. Yes. Share your story. 
my, my Lord. You ought to have a testimony and then stand on the promises of God. Powerful word from the Lord. Take that word. Amen. Meditate on it. And I want you to, before the sun rises in the morning, make sure you tell somebody about this word. See, let me just share something, church folk. The devil has tricked us to do. To come to church and be just so disobedient as can be. We'll sit and hear a sermon that talks about telling your story and sharing it with somebody. And then we'll go right on back into our normal lives and won't even share what we heard. Now, he talked about Thanksgiving when the folk wouldn't take time to just tell about the Lord. And when you do that, because sometimes we just, we, we, we only see the man or the woman that's preaching. And we don't see the God that sent the message. Now, God just said this morning to us, I need you to tell the story more. I'm trying to make this thing real. Because sometimes we don't take sermons like he really talking to us. He talks to us and folk ain't there. Yeah. So now the, the, the sermon today says we need to get busy telling it more. Yeah. Like the man at the store who didn't even know what they do in church. So as you go on your journey, find somebody. Maybe the waitress that served your meal. Tell the story. Or uh, maybe the person that you left at your house that laying up there asleep while you coming to church. Tell them the story. Amen. Then you would have been obedient to what God said this morning. Let the girl, let the children of God say amen. I'm just so thankful for the blessing of the Lord. I'm sharing this because I want us to go to another level of obedience with God. And when you hear God speak, don't act like he ain't saying that. And don't act like he's not talking to you. Because if you heard him, he's talking to you. And so I'm going to make sure I tell this story to somebody. Amen. Amen. Now. I thank God for those of you that have had a wonderful Thanksgiving holidays and we thank God, amen, for just keeping us safe and allowing us to share with our families, amen, and to the blessedness of the Lord. I do need to remind us that on tomorrow, uh, we're having our quarterly conference. I need everybody to come out. This is our first one for uh, this year, amen. We will dress up. Let's dress in black. Uh, we need to be out full force, amen. All our ministers, all our officers, all our leaders, all our people, amen. Uh, and so as we come to our quarterly conference, we will have it in the sanctuary so we'll have plenty of room for everybody, amen. Praise the Lord. And we look for y'all to start us off with a good praise, amen. Praise be the Lord as we come and have a powerful uh, experience at the quarterly conference with our presiding elder. And all of you should have your reports in uh, so that we can get a full report on everything in terms of the work of ministry. I want to just say thank God for each and every one of you. Amen. And all that you do for the Lord, just thank God for the experiences you have with the Lord. Amen. And I want you to look and expect God to show up even in a marvelous and even more marvelous and mighty way. Amen. And I want you to expect the, the miracles of the Lord to show up, the blessings of God to, sh to show up in your life. Amen. Somebody give God a hand all over the house and tell him thank you. Mm. Come on, give him a hand. Give him a good hand. Give him a good hand all over the house. Give him a good hand. Give him a good hand. Come on, as we stand, we're getting ready to go. But come on, as we stand, give him a good hand. Come on, give God a good hand. He's been good. He's been better than that. Give him a good hand. Oh, God, praise his name. Praise his name. Praise his name. Glory. Glory.
glory. Amen. This time, let us praise God for all blessings. to him who's able to do exceedingly abundantly and above all that we ask we think or imagine according to the power of God that works within us to him be glory to him be power to him be majesty both now henceforth and forevermore let all God's children say